In tonight's video, we're gonna be looking at why skinwalkers are popping up more and more, and as you'll see in the first story, in our own national parks. My family and I have been living in the middle of Missouri for a couple of years now, and things have been crazy, to say the least. A list of our experiences. Well, first, it started out pretty passive, the sound of old fashioned radios and music boxes, despite looking everywhere, including our crawl space beneath the house, we never found anything. Everybody in the house has heard this sound on separate occasions, despite not everybody believing it was necessarily something paranormal. You know, tapping windows, walls, on backs. We don't have rats, believe me, we checked. No branches up on our trees or ground windows, I mean, our windows are feet off the ground because we live on a steep hill, but still, scratches, and I don't believe in this stuff, and acted like a complete fool trying to freak my sisters out. So, you know, the lights are flickering on rapidly, and I was lying on my back with my phone, and I felt this burning sensation. I thought it might be a tick, so I asked my sister to check, only to find three scratches. This is when we got my mother involved. See, we got into contact with a childhood friend who happened to be a cardinal on Facebook. He told us to have a priest come and bless the house and to go and get me checked for mental illness, which I do have but don't necessarily understand why I would need to be checked for mental illness when I had visible scratches from something I can't explain. Things began to happen on the daily after we heard a woman shriek for a full seven seconds just outside her window, right around midnight. We were paralyzed for about a second and bolted to get our dad and the gun. We have had escaped prisoners on the loose around our area before and a lot of meth heads who wander around our street. So we didn't chalk it up to something spooky necessarily, but rather something we could shoot at. We checked the entire perimeter of our property, nothing. Static in the corner of my room as well. Like almost every single night, I heard static from the same corner. I took back my dresser and got so tired of it, I unplugged everything in my room because I thought it was something else explainable. The TV hum or something, but it's still just static. My father came in and he heard it too. My sister even heard it and it caused her not to be able to sleep in my room because it kept her up and made her even lightheaded. In fact, one night, this static got too much and I went to sleep with my sister. I'm 17, but this was getting old and quick. I was thoroughly scared of our house at this point. I mean, we were seriously so scared of our own property. We bought a blow up bed so I could sleep in my sister's room when things got a little too much. I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't want to go alone because it is right next to my room. So I took my sister and I dared her to sit in my room for the duration of my pee. To my horror, I heard her footsteps bolt out and I found her hyperventilating on her bed. She had seen a pale hand dart out from under my bed, which is like her worst fear ever. So we locked the bedroom door to sleep soundly, but every time we tried to look over, it was unlocked. Now this happened five times before we finally gave up and the closet door also kept opening all throughout the night. We live on a family property with our two grandparents having lived here, my mother and her brother, and our mother always passed down the wisdom of when the sun starts to go down, you go inside. I've always thought it was just because we have coyotes and the occasional wolf, and now I'm really starting to wonder. Our outside experiences include things like seeing black masses moving through the forest and behind trees, children and mothers crying in the woods behind us, screams, just screams, gut-wrenching screams. We have foxes and wildcats, and we're experienced in wood etiquette. And this is just different. The woods will go long, silent, and the cracking of one path being made through the woods with us seeing nothing. Eyes watching us way too far off the ground and way too focused to leave us comfortable staring back. This is only the beginning. As a personal interjection, I would also like to add to the story that there have been many accounts of Skinwalker, Wendigo, and other various cryptid sightings all around the Mark Twain National Forest, which resides in the southeastern part of Missouri. And several of the national parks across Missouri State also hold some of the strangest sighting stories of bizarre paranormal phenomena that does not end at just cryptids, or even ghosts, mind you, or even missing 411. It's evident here that high strangeness knows no bounds. Hey everyone, first off, let me say that this is not an experience during which I saw anything. It was actually something I had heard. 
Now, here's the thing when it comes to nighttime sounds. I was practically raised in the woods. I mean, I've spent huge amounts of time out there, both day and night. I wouldn't call myself a woodsman, mostly because I don't have a flannel shirt unbuttoned halfway down in my sternum or a big bushy beard, but all of my experiences with the woods and the various sounds you hear them are from the Appalachia, the Pacific Northwest, and New England. You see, I have no real experience with nocturnal animals found in the southwestern United States, which is where this happened. I'm not familiar with the desert creatures, though I've heard that Chosen One partied with them occasionally. Since I didn't see anything, I can't tell you what it was. I probably couldn't even tell you what it was even if I had seen it, but it's the sound. Now, I've heard all kinds of nocturnal animals and insect sounds, and I can identify a good number of them, but... Whatever this was, it chilled me to my bones. I was visiting some friends of mine who lived near Van Horn, Texas, and one morning, about 4 a.m., I was outside smoking a cigarette and began hearing what sounded like a few dogs barking off in the distance. Nothing out of the ordinary, just one of the neighbors had two or three of them, so I figured they'd just seen some type of animal or something that got them all excited. Typical dog behavior, right? Well, the thing was, as I continued smoking, I began to pick out something different that was mixed in with the barking. It caught my attention, but nothing more. It just happened to notice it. But over the course of the next couple of minutes, the dogs stopped barking, but they were still that same sound. It was gradually drawing closer to where I was. If I had to describe it, I would say that it was something trying to sound like a dog, but not quite getting it right. It continued to slowly move closer, until I heard what sounded like it was right nearby the tree line, only about 30 feet away from me, and of course just far enough away to not be within reach of the exterior light of the side garage. Now what struck me is the sound seemed to be coming from higher than I was tall, but I could hear it moving around on the ground. I went inside and stayed there. As I said, I'm pretty familiar with animal sounds, and I've heard coyotes and wolves and bears that all seemed like they were very close by while camping, but this sound scared me. I'm not really looking for answers because nobody here was there to have heard it, but best you can do is just go off my description. And my description might be pretty awful, but I'm told it didn't seem to help them at all because they had no idea what it could be. Obviously, I'm here for a reason, but who knows? A bad mimic trying to bark? That's just what it sounded like to me. So sorry this was kind of long. To start this off, this is a completely true story, and I'm not too sure what my encounter was or if it was absolutely a skinwalker or not, but I wanted to post my story here to see if anybody maybe had a similar experience. To add some context, I live in the southern region of Colorado, and this encounter was near the Spanish Peaks in a public hunting area roughly two hours away from where I live. I was hunting there alone for about two years before this had happened and haven't been back there since. There's a big clearing at the start of the public land area and a dirt road going through it to the woods, which takes you to a sort of valley. I was tracking a group of mule deer right there for about a month and knew there was a small stream where they bed down at in the afternoon. So I decided to head up there at about noon and wait for them at a small rock ledge facing the stream. I got there about two o'clock and this was about a mile through some pretty dense woods to get there. So I sat down, unpacked my backpack to get some food and water, and sat there for about a good hour and saw nothing. So then I decided to move up the valley to try and find them. And it's then that I noticed that it was getting to be a little bit darker outside, and I realized it was maybe only an hour and a half until dusk. It's then that I noticed the woods around me were completely silent. As in no birds, no squirrels running along the forest floor, no wind, absolutely no sound at all to the point where the loudest thing was my own footsteps. Now this really made me uneasy, and my gut was telling me to leave. So I stopped for a second to listen for anything. It's then that I heard the same sounding footsteps I was making, and I know the difference between what different animals sound like when walking in the woods, but these were eerily human or bipedal. They began to get louder and pick up in speed. And at that point, I got up and began to run as fast as I could to the road, which is still almost a mile away. It took longer than it should have to get there, and I don't know how long I was running for, but I know I almost ran a full sprint for quite a while. You know, it might just be my imagination, but I swear, I could hear footsteps trailing behind me the entire time. And by the time I reached the clearing, 
and saw my car, the sun was roughly about to set and it was almost too dark to navigate the woods. So I bolted to my car and when I got there, I absolutely kid you not, there was a deer at the end of the clearing just sitting there, casually walking back into the woods where I was just at. It was the most intense adrenaline filled experience I have ever had and I'll never go back there again. Not even with people. If anybody has a similar story, I would love to hear about it because I truly don't believe in this kind of thing until it happened to me. I've never really believed in this stuff to be honest and I still don't know if what I heard was a skinwalker or a goat or a person, but it still really freaks me out. All right, so my family lives on about five acres of land. To our left, we have neighbors who live on a hill about 10 acres. And to our right, there is a huge barn where a guy who owns a big construction company stores some of his equipment. The barn is probably a good 90 yards away from my family's house, and there are no street lights or lights at all in the area between my house and the barn. So when this barn first got built, I was about 15 and my little brother was 13. His name is Bryce. We were both pretty interested in it because it was huge and at this time, completely empty. So with no plan, we decided it would be a great idea to just go check it out at about three in the morning. I know, terrible idea, right? Well, we walked down to the barn with our great Pyrenees, who is an absolute unit. Her name is Piper. And the walk to the barn wasn't scary. We made it there without anything weird happening. The barn is lit all around you, so you can see everything around it from about a 20 foot radius. So me and Bryce are just walking around and we brought a football and we're just tossing it around having fun. I remember shoving Bryce in the porta potty and not letting him out and just having a good time. So after about seven minutes or so, me and Bryce are both at the front of the barn on the gravel path, just talking when we hear a noise pretty far off in the distance. It was a very weird noise though, like a girl saying, hey, but very strangely. Now me and Bryce both stopped talking and look in the direction of the noise. I wasn't really scared at this time. It was like a high pitched noise. It didn't sound like it came from something menacing necessarily. It was pretty far away too. So it's completely silent now. And me and Bryce are just looking into the dark abyss. And 30 seconds later, this noise is about 10 yards away. And I mean, it was right outside of the lit up part of the land. So we couldn't see it, but it was right there. And it sounded like a woman yelling, hey, in a panic, but it also didn't sound human. It was terrifying. I turned around and booked it yelling, holy crap, holy crap, and just surging with adrenaline. And so was Bryce. It was absolutely the fastest I have ever ran in my life. And as I'm running, I hear, hey, two more times. I look back, but there's nothing there in the lit up area. I have no clue what it was, not a skinwalker necessarily, but I thought it fit since it was unexplainable and creepy. I will never forget the night of August 14th, 2021. I was fishing the river with my friend in a suburb of Minneapolis slash St. Paul. And we loved coming to this public park to fish because it was so quiet and there was a nice sandbar to fish from. This park had a Sioux burial mound about a half mile from our own spot. And after fishing for a better part of the day, we decided to leave at dusk. In order to get back to our vehicles, we had to kind of take a trail through the woods, which was roughly about a five minute walk at best. I put a clip on light on the bill of my hat so we could see the trail. And I remember when I first glanced ahead down the trail, I saw two circular white lights that I assumed were fireflies. Once we got further down the trail, we were closer to the area where I had seen the fireflies. It was then that I saw a pair of eyes that were either highly reflective from my light or glowing white. And it wasn't long before I could make out a body. It was a very large white body on four legs, bigger than a wolf, but unnaturally skinny. I couldn't make out any facial features because its eyes were so bright. I wanted to warn my friend, but all I could manage to say was something like, there's something there. We had no choice but to proceed because this was the only way back to our vehicles. This thing just stared us down, but did not make a single sound. And my friend yells at it to try and scare it away, just trying to be brave, but it didn't react at all. In fact, then I yelled at it after she did, and it responded back mimicking my voice. I honestly questioned myself and thought I was imagining things. So I yelled at it again, and it responded back at the same volume same pitch, exactly like my voice. And at this point, we realized this was not an animal we're dealing with here. We both continued on the path in silence 
but I maintain eye contact with this being. I felt like this thing was ready to attack us at any moment, but it just stood there staring. Eventually, we were out of the woods and I could no longer see its eyes. We made it back to our vehicle and I felt a sense of relief come over me. I asked my friend and I said, did you hear that talk back to me? She said she did and it sounded like my voice when it responded back to us. If she hadn't heard the voice, I would have assumed I just imagined it. But she corroborated that detail with me, further validating my experience. We went over what happened and our stories were the same except she had the creature have like a wolf-like head. After our experience, my friend who is of a tribe went to see a shaman. The shaman believed it was an evil spirit and actually performed a cleansing on her. She was still pretty shaken up by the whole experience for several weeks to come. I tried to hire a spiritual advisor online, but when I described the experience and asked for a spiritual cleansing of my own, they said that they were not available at this time. At the advice of one of my friends, I burned some tobacco and said a prayer that the entity would leave me alone. It actually took several months to just feel normal again, but I still think about it on a weekly basis now. I've tried to do further research and contacted the management at that same park. Now they said that the park we went to had ancient Indian remains scattered all along the river that were unmarked. They said there were more native remains in that park than any other parks they managed. I contacted several Native American friends and was told the entity we encountered was a skinwalker. I know skinwalkers are a part of the Navajo culture, but from what I read, it checks more of the boxes, more than any other supernatural being or cryptid. My friend and I have never experienced something like this before in our entire lives. In fact, recently, my mom had to go to an old high school friend's birthday party. It was convenient for us to go because a family friend has a farmhouse we could stay at in Central Florida. But my mom didn't feel comfortable going alone because the farmhouse, it can be really creepy at night you know, due to the lack of light on the property and it just kind of being out in the middle of nowhere. So I told my mom that I would go with her as long as I could bring a friend. Well, we get to the property and it's this huge 52 acre plot of land with cows and horses and open fields with a tree line surrounding the land, two Native American forests. We unpacked our stuff and were able to check all of the property out because the owner had a golf cart type ATV. My friend saw a TikTok talking about skinwalkers and their Native American name, and we didn't know any better. So we're talking about them all day on all parts of the property. And later on that night, we saw a video talking about how even saying their name could provoke them to come. We immediately got kind of scared because we found out the property my mom was going to would be about an hour away, and we would be in the farmhouse at night all alone. Now, as the sun began to set, we quickly noticed that none of the windows on all four walls of the house had curtains, which means it was just open. With the lights on in the house, you could only see your reflection from the inside, but could see right in from the outside. As I said, the property had little to no light, but some floodlights were motion activated on the back porch of the farmhouse. And just a quick description of the farmhouse. It was a one bedroom, one bathroom house with a little living room and a kitchen. There were two doors, one leading out to the fields in the back and the other was directly attached to the horse stables, which was more of a lounging area, as there were tables and a bar with a giant flat screen. Okay, so now we can kind of get into more of the scary part of the night. My friend was putting away our dinner in the fridge, and I went outside to smoke. As soon as I walked up to the table in the horse stable, this is what happened. I heard something really close to me and ran back inside. As I came back inside, my friend began asking if I knocked on the window. Of course, I had said no, but my friend found that hard to believe as she definitely heard something. She heard a distinct knocking at the window. The window is important to the story because the floodlights were right outside of it. I also forgot to mention that we had brought our dog and she was fine the entire day until it became dark outside. Now, when my friend and I were both inside, we tried to just brush it off until the floodlight outside the window turned on and my dog bolted to see who was there. My dog sat there and barked at the window, but when we went to go check, there was nothing. Now, both of us really needed a cigarette at this point, so we both decided to go outside and give it one more try. 
My friend steps outside and looks to her right. I was confused and told her we should stay in the stable, so we walked to the stable, and as soon as we sat down, there was another two knocks on the building. We got up and sprinted towards the house where we locked ourselves in and where my friend told me she heard whispering coming from the right as soon as we stepped out of the house. And at this point, we're really freaked out and the dog had begun to bark at the same window again where the light turned on originally, only once again to prove that there was nothing there. The only comfort we can confide in at this time was simply calling my friend's parents and some of our friends. However, after about a short 10 minutes of time talking to people, our service cut out and both of our calls failed. We couldn't text anybody either. And this really began scaring us because we hadn't had a problem with our service at all the entire day. And now all of a sudden, we have no bars. We once again tried to relax and put a movie on, but that's when we heard something jump on the roof and walk above the room we were in. My friend and I immediately leapt up and ran to the bathroom. We didn't know what to do, but at this point, I thought our best bet was to run to the car, which was at least 40 feet away, and to get off the property until my mom and the owner could come home and be back. We grabbed our stuff, still hearing whatever was on the roof, walk around to where we moved in the house. Now, as soon as we got to the door, my friend pushed me and said, listen, which is when we heard two knocks right at the door. This is the same door that we were standing in front of. It then runs to the back of the house where all the floodlights on the back porch went on and the dog was going crazy. My friend and I were on the verge of tears. I told her we had to go run to the car and get out of here, which we did. And as we're running, we could hear something on the roof of the stables, almost as if it was following us to the car. And we sped off and sat at a parking lot about two miles away for two whole hours until my mom and her friend had returned to the property safely. They escorted us back in as we were all walking to the stables to get to the door of the house and there was another knocking at the stable. The owner said she heard it and went to go check but saw that it was nothing there. Something my friend and I had noticed was that the sounds of the crickets were now back again, whereas before, they had gone completely quiet. When we left the house earlier that night, there wasn't a single sound that could be heard other than whatever was on the roof. My mom ended up sleeping there at the house, but my friend and I were simply traumatized. We felt as though the farmhouse was peaceful again as soon as we got back because we didn't feel any of the negative energy now. This is the same energy, though, we were feeling earlier so we know we're not crazy. We're too scared to even sleep, so we both sat in the bathroom on the floor, apologizing for whatever we might have offended. We honestly don't know what this could have been, but we don't wanna post this and get it taken down and being framed as a question. We have come to the conclusion of our own that what it might be could be potentially a skinwalker. It would also be interesting to hear your thoughts. To finish off my last year of high school, I had to go to a school which was located about 10 to 15 miles away from the nearest town in Durango, Colorado. It was a boarding school, and I lived there with about 30 other students and teachers. When I first got there, I never even heard of the term skinwalker until one of my classmates had mentioned it. So I got curious and looked it up. Well, Google made it seem like a skinwalker was just some mere joke, saying it's a magical transforming creature. So we would always say, watch out for the skinwalkers, you know, and nobody really took it seriously. The campus was huge, probably about 20 to 30 acres of land next to a river. About two weeks after I got there, I was walking around the campus and noticed an Indian burial ground about 75 feet away from the cabin. There was about 20 cabins in total, and each could only fit roughly two people to live in. Well, one night, my roommate and I were up around midnight, playing Call of Duty and such, when we began hearing sounds of some very large animal full force sprinting into the back of our cabin multiple times. We're freaked out, and our school did not allow guns, so of course we had no choice but to double lock the doors and close the shades. Even the night security guard came by just because he thought we were walking around outside and causing a havoc at midnight. He came by about every hour to check on everybody and make sure everything was kosher and cool. He was a pretty cool guy though, and he told us he was convinced we were outside, but after we told him what had happened, and after he saw that both of our faces were pale white, he kinda sorta believed us. Weird things like this would continue to happen about once or twice a week after that for roughly about two months. 
Now, whether it was random scratching we heard on our window or a whole bunch of lights in the middle of the field that we would see in the distance through our window also included screams and whistles, etc. The people in the neighboring cabins and I would always talk about similar experiences, but stopped shortly after a native that went to the school told us that talking about skinwalkers attracts them. It was getting to the point that we had no choice but to tell somebody. I decided to have a meeting with my principal to talk to him about it on behalf of everyone there. What he said freaked me out. He tells me that back in 2010, he was working late at this school one night, and as he walked out of his office, he saw someone sprinting into the cafeteria, ripping papers off the wall as it ran by, and he thought it was a student, so he chased whoever or whatever it was into the cafeteria, which was a one-way, one-way out. Only one door. And as he got into the cafeteria, turning on the lights, there was nobody there. My roommate dropped out of school about halfway through the year because of this, and I couldn't find anybody else to live with. He had simply had enough. That cabin was too terrifying. So now I'm forced to listen to this like all alone for months on end. It was so, so messed up. I was on the verge of dropping out too at this point, but I couldn't. I was so close to finishing my senior year. Now about three quarters into the year, our school had this quarterly thing where we go on a week-long hiking trip somewhere around the country. There was five different groups, and my group was going on a hike up Humphreys Peak in Arizona. We camped the whole way back to Colorado. It was a six-hour drive to Humphreys Peak, and the hike took most of the day. First night was not bad, and I wasn't thinking of anything skinwalker-related as I haven't even been bothered by them for weeks at this point. Now, the very next day, we spend most of the day driving slash hiking to the next camping spot, which is a random place in the middle of the desert, about five or six miles down a trail. As we set up our hammocks and start to relax, this older aged woman in a bikini appears from behind a hill that we were all at. It was very unsettling as I noticed she didn't have a water bottle, backpack, or really anything six miles into this trail. She proceeds to start talking to one of my teachers and she says that she knows this place well and can show him around. They start walking around and everybody couldn't help but notice her walk. It was like she had broke both of her knees and was very obviously limping, but not limping. I can't even describe how weird of a walk she had. Anyway, a couple of minutes go by and my teacher returns without her and he walks by everybody and goes straight into his tent. I didn't think too much of it, but thought her walk was kind of weird and here's where it gets really messed up. Third day, we finally get to Tucker Flat. After a long day of driving and another long hike into the desert, we end up on a giant rock and decide to camp there. We're in the dead middle of nowhere, right? There's nothing. It's getting dark, so we have a fire, make food, and shortly after go to bed. Too bad I didn't sleep at all that whole night. I spent most of the night staring at the top of my tent as from what happened the night before, still thinking about the crazy old lady in a bikini. It was about 10 or 11 when we began hearing some noises that sounded like rustling at first, and then those rustles turned into footsteps, and then back into small rustles again. As my roommate and I are both hearing it getting closer and closer to our tent, I turn a whisper, you hear that? Nearly crapping myself that it wouldn't hear us. He didn't answer me. So I looked over at him and he was staring at me, dead in the eyes, bugged out with his knife in hand. I grabbed mine too next to me and slowly put it to my chest. And I knew what we had to do, but I didn't know if I had the kahunas to do it. The footsteps finally stop and I got a sense of relief and decided it was a perfect time to now open the tent and check out what was behind all this noise. Now, as I creep over and slowly open the tent from my side, I am greeted by a pair of eyes staring back at me from less than a foot away, a black cat in the dead middle of the desert. At this point, there were two scenarios going through my head. What the hell? What on earth? And when my teammate peeked his head and sees the cat, his jaw drops. How is there a cat five miles into a hiking trail in the dead middle of the desert? At 11 p.m., we're stumped and decided to walk back to the trailhead, getting in the van, and we realized this was probably our safest bet. So we ended up walking the whole five, six mile hike back at 11 p.m., sleeping in the van for good. The whole time we heard rustling behind us and whenever we used our flash, there was a pair of eyes looking at us from a distance. I ended up reading all sorts of information about skinwalkers and a shiver shot down my spine as I read that skinwalkers often turn into a small dog or cat to trick whoever they're messing with. 
This school was by far the most messed up place I have ever had to live at, and I thank God every day that I do not live there anymore. This is just one of the experiences I've had and it only got worse throughout the year. If you guys enjoy this video, be sure to go ahead and slap that like button and leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and keep your notifications on so that way YouTube will let you know every time I release a great new video. As always guys, I love you all, keep an open mind and I'll see you guys in the next video.